Hi, I'm Maggie. Hi, I'm Grace, and this is A Very Bookish Podcast. Hey guys, welcome back to episode 51 of A Very Bookish Podcast. It's actually crazy that in a week, we'll be one year. We will have been doing this podcast for a year now. It will be our year anniversary, and it's so, it's very crazy to me considering where we started like when we started I think our first guest was Celine um at yeah. Moon Girl Reads and like when we first started we were like when we got our first hundred followers on Instagram we were like screaming and shouting and oh my gosh it's crazy it's been really insane I mean the guests that we've had on like yes, we've TikTok influencers, we've had a verif- we've had Amen on multiple times. We've had Pauline, we've had Tish, we've had Kate. We have like the iconic book talkers on our podcast. And we've also had New York Times bestselling authors on our podcast as well. Like we have. Thinking about that blows my mind. Like it does, but then at this uh, well, I guess because it's it, it's me and how I process um yeah. I if things that are big for me like I don't I'm like yeah it's okay it's fine and it's like it's fine it, it's different because like when we <laughs> met them they're so they're just like us like they're so normal and like I don't know it's just like what we usually do is like we put people up on a pedestal and we're like oh my gosh they're like above human but it's like talking to like Katie Robert I still talk about talking to Katie Robert all the time and like Nisha and Sophie and Ben and Alexis and it's like crazy and Anna like it's it's crazy because like a lot of those authors that we've had on have become somewhat like friends some yeah. more than others you know some some are more busier than others but like the opportunities that we've had <laughs> since then has been pretty insane and yeah it's been a year well almost a year almost next a year. week will be a year. um next week will be a year next week we are going to do a different type of episode um so if you have we're gonna basically it's gonna be kind of like a way where you guys are going to essentially interview us so if you have any questions that you would like to ask us, if you have anything that you guys would want us to want to know about us and, and about our journey or, or about anything that you guys would want us to bring up, make sure you guys like send us a DM with your questions on Instagram or email us, you know, so we can get that all together because we want to be able to connect and connect with you guys as our listeners across all of our platforms. So It'll and for like our Spotify, for our Spotify listeners, I'll have a little poll for you to um, submit questions if you have any. But yeah, you can ask us about a guest experience we had, um, anything like that. We won't get too, too, uh, we won't put too much like tea out there. It's definitely going to be more about our journey of the podcast because we definitely have been yeah. doing this for a year and it's weird to think that we have. Yeah. Like if I think back to a year ago, I was in my dorm room. You know, actually, actually, this would have been our anniversary episode. This week would have been our anniversary episode because do you remember? Do you remember the first week we said we're going to record this week? We're going to have our episode. And then we we completely botched that whole recording session because we were laughing so much and we were trying to record the intro of our episodes (laughs) and it just it took like a whole hour because we were trying to like sync up the times and for a lot of you guys who don't know we record over zoom because we're not obviously in the same state let alone like the same time zone yeah. and so we were trying to link us saying a very bookish podcast at the same time and we couldn't do it, it was, because of like the timing it was guys if y'all <laughs> ever see that I don't even know if I have it anymore I probably have to look in my hard drive 
But like, it was so embarrassing because Grace would say it and then I would say it because there was a lag. And so I would wait for Grace to say it. And then like, I would say it with Grace, but then for her, it would sound like I'm saying it too late. And it was just, it was, we'll probably have to record another one for this new year. We'll, we'll record another one. And then we'll show you guys the BTS of that because yeah. it, it's just a very funny experience. It was, but yeah, but like, I'm looking at our episode date in our first premiered episode was December 4th, 2020. And so our like one year exactly, we'll upload it on Saturday, December 4th which mm -hmm. is kind of what we're going to go into. We are changing the time for when we are uploading. We're actually going to just delay it by, what did we say? Like 12 hours. So like 16 hours, we're going to just start doing it um, 9 a.m. Saturday mornings. That gives me time because um, I was definitely busy Friday nights. There are so many Friday nights where I uploaded two hours late. Um, and that just gives us time and like, for you listeners, you're not having to listen to it on like a premiere on like a Wednesday, a Friday night when everybody's kind of busy and stuff. It's like a Saturday morning where if you're out doing stuff, errands and stuff is what I mostly do Saturday morning. Or you're cleaning. Cleaning, like yes. Maybe clean. Yeah. But yeah, we want to just push it back and it reasonable for like the next year. And if we don't like it, we can always change it. But we've always been uploading on Fridays and so mm -hmm. we were first uploading at like noon and then we changed it to 6 p.m. We were doing noon for YouTube. We've, we've been going back. We've been going back and it's just we're now on a Saturday. It's fine. Yeah. It, so both uh, Spotify and um, like all of our on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google, whatever, all of our like pocket cast, all those like random ones that we're on too. And YouTube will all go up at the same time, um, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. Central, Saturday mornings now. Um, we, I, I don't know. I was, I was just putting this out there. I haven't talked to Grace about this, but we talked about it before, like having a Patreon. So let us know. Oh, if yeah. <laughs> any of y'all would be actually interested in a Patreon. So kind of, or like a members only um, for YouTube where you can get like the episode a day early. Um, kind of thing where instead of on Saturday you get it Friday I actually follow a YouTube channel who does that often and they also get like other exclusive content so if you did want to sign up for members what like what price range would y'all be interested in and like what kind of content you would want to see because we're definitely as y'all know I'm gonna go see Grace I'm not gonna see Grace once I'm gonna see Grace twice Clearly, because one time is not enough. Oh, it's, yeah. And it's literally, like, within a week of each other, <laughs> which I find so it's, funny. It's funny. It's funny because, like, uh, we – so it's been, like, six months now that we have been planning for Eamon, Melissa, and Maggie to come to California. Um, and I'm going to take them to Disneyland, which is going to be pretty awesome. That's, like, the one amazing thing that we have in Southern California that's, like – top tier <laughs> and um so we we've been planning that trip and recently like all the girls like booked up their plane tickets and yeah. then like literally a few days later maggie's like hey so guess what my dad said let's go to disneyland and i'm like wait i know <laughs> he like he said hey uh because like i'm not going home i'm not going home at all so thanksgiving I'm actually staying here alone in my apartment, which everybody is like really sad about, but I honestly yeah. don't really care about Thanksgiving. Like, I'm sorry. I just don't care I love about Thanksgiving. It like I liked being around my family, but now with like, it just, after like the year that I've had, I really just want alone time. And like, I don't know. I got problems. I got issues. I'm seeing my therapist about it. <laughs> Grace is like, I know. <laughs> Like, Grace is like, oh, She's dear. got a lot of She's issues. Like, no, 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 no. You don't. It's not but, that bad. It's not yeah, that bad. Yeah, but, like, he was, it's like, that bad. so here's here's the story. So I hadn't booked my flight yet. It was mm -hmm. before I booked my flight, but we were getting ready to. And my dad was like, hey, do you want to go to Disneyland? Like, we'll leave, like, a couple days after Christmas and go between Christmas and New Year's as, like, a get, like, you can actually, like, visit us and stuff and we'll go do something fun because we don't want to stay in but fuck nowhere, Kansas. I was like, yeah, 
sure, when are we going to go? And so I tried to convince them to go like the 3rd to the 5th of January so that I would say, oh, I just want to stay the 5th to when I leave with Grace. And then we would just stay there. Basically. He said no. So I'm literally going like a week and then I have like five days off back home here in Omaha and then I leave again again for LA and I'm just like it'll be fine <laughs> it'll be fine um we'll have fun I guess <laughs> it's crazy because like I, I, another friend of ours is uh coming down to SoCal too so it'll be a great opportunity for all of us to meet up well because she's coming the day before right well she's coming like, like oh a, a week. week oh so we can all meet up yeah oh okay that's great also, because I have the full day. Like, I have a full, yeah. Complete you know day. what would be cute? What would be cute if we did, like, a little vlog type thing? For the podcast? That would be very, very cute. Like, I was thinking, like, if, like, any of y'all would ever be interested in, like, watching a vlog. And, like, if y'all would be interested in, like, the vlog of, like, Grace and I meeting for the first time and, like, that day spending. There'll be probably a lot of tears and oh my gosh, hugging. Dude. I I'm not I'm not a hugger, but I will hug the shit out of you. Like the fact that it would okay. almost it's okay. It'll be like a year and a half we met, and yet we still have not like seen each other. This is like a long distance relationship, okay? Okay, it is a long distance relationship. <laughs> don't don't try to downplay us like it is. It is. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> okay, but it's so funny. Oh, that, like, yeah. This that's this... that's what we have planned this yeah. winter. It's I gonna mean, be awesome. Um, we're going to a polycon together. What else? What else? Oh yeah, polycon. But that's that like took, that's yeah. summer. That's, that's like six months. Of actual. Also, <laughs> also, if there are any listeners out there with a deity B ticket, hit me up because that's what I need. Yeah. No, no, that's not what I need. Is that what I need? uh you need a uh it's i need a poly a poly a poly a poly poly ticket a poly and whatever whatever it's called a poly ticket that's what i need i have a deity b if you want to trade let me know because she'll trade you and then the remaining i'll pay you the difference yeah and and anything else you want you want to you want some stickers from our shop yeah, if you want some stickers from my shop, please let me know. You want some of the uh, other stuff we're getting? Yeah, we got it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, so to jump right in, that was a, the longest introduction ever. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but we like to talk. We like we're, to talk. We're, we're enjoying... talkers. We're talkers. Yeah. So the main focus of this episode... <laughs> <laughs> starting now i literally texted is... grace like five minutes before the episode started <laughs> hey hey sometimes we just talk how yeah. we talk yeah. um if you uh so we're rounding up the, the end of the year which is usually around the time that everybody starts deciding what they're going to do um and with their reading goals if they're going to complete them if what books are they prioritizing so that's what we're going to dive in today we're talking about our reading goals for the rest of the year what we're planning on finishing what we're going to struggle to get through so yeah here we go jumping right in maggie what's what's your reading goal um so my reading goal for the year was a hundred bucks Grace, guess how many books I read? I've not updated my Instagram profile, so you can't look at my Instagram. 160? 70? So I read 164 books. I'm still technically reading two books because I haven't finished them yet because I literally stopped reading at November um, so that I could study for finals and stuff. But um, yeah, so I'm currently technically still reading The Mafia Queen. I did a review on the series I love it. It's literally like literal, like Italian mafia book. Um, And I'm 74 pages in. I really loved the series. Like when I tell you there's a cliffhanger at the end of book two and I had to wait for book three. I can't do that. I was so mad. I was so mad because Laurelin Page Press, they sent me this. 
And when they sent me this, I was like, and the book didn't come for like a week and a half. And I was so mad. I was like, this bitch. Cause I did it during my reading, like my reading sprint over fall break. And I was like, I can't believe they did this to me. Like how? So I'm currently reading Mafia Queen. I'm still reading Wild Swans, which is a book for my Asian history class. Um, it is uh-huh. about three generation of Chinese women um, living in communist China. So that was uh, what I read about. Um, hey, I, w- I just want to like go back to like the whole reading goal thing. I was pretty spot on. You are. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, you! Are. <laughs> I forgot that you can pull up my Goodreads. <laughs> that's that's literally what I've been doing right now. I've been pulling up her her Goodreads and being like, "What has?" I haven't updated in a while. Oh my god, I have six requests on Goodreads. But you haven't read, dude. I have so many requests on Goodreads. These are like from like twenty two days ago. Wow, I'm really bad at that. What have you read? What's your last two okay. current reads? None, because so, she's been in a reading slump. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, so, the last book I finished, the last book I finished was There Are No Saints by Sophie Lark. Um, Sophie Lark has me in a chokehold right now, and it's like, dude, she's I can't so move good at forward. Writing. I can't she's, move forward with my life. That book, like, if you think you don't like like the morally gray serial killers like read that book look 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 i i was i'm sensitive on some certain things yeah okay and you know this is my first dark you know kind of thing Mm -hmm. and i will say this the scene where he first sneaks in Mm-hmm. and leaves a little gift not even a gift but a mm-hmm. little something behind mm-hmm. I was so creeped out I was so creeped out my skin crawled and I was like please no why but then oh yeah but it freaked me out but then it was also like you're in his head you feel yeah. you see the compulsiveness in his mind and you see the way that his mind like is trying to analyze her and trying to decipher what it is like what these feelings are because he's like literally a psychopath like yeah. an actual no is he a psychopath or is he more like a sociopath I think he's, he's a, sociopath. Like a sociopath he, yeah he's more of a sociopath yeah because psychopath psychopaths is the other one psychopaths like enjoy like yeah the, the psychopath is Shaw. Yeah. Shaw is a psychopath. Yeah. Cole is a sociopath. And it's just very interesting yeah. to see him. And and I get it. It's not for everybody. And that's okay. Like it does not, it, if you don't want to read this book, it's totally fine if you don't want to. Yeah. I understand that there are some preservations when going into dark romance. And that's totally fine. If you don't feel like reading it, that's cool. But then there are other people who want to see what that kind of process is and see how you can take a character so evil or so bad and but yet add him into like this story where you end up rooting for him or end up hoping that he comes out on top you know so it's it it's really a real challenge as an author to do that and hopefully we're going to get to talk to, um, uh, about it more when the second book comes out. We're going to do a whole review episode on it. So if you haven't read it yeah. and you want to listen to a little bit more about that book and about the whole series, make sure you guys read both books and then come back to us. We're going to do an episode on that in December, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, so for Grace and I are very different. I'm okay with like gore. I, I enjoy dark romance, like I enjoy pom- pomegranates and promises and pomegranates. Mm-hmm. That book, like you want a dark, like that's like, I think a little bit higher than There Are No Saints where that's a dark book. Like it's it's not for the faint of heart kind of thing. And like reverse harems, I'm very into the darker. Also, 
if anybody is out there, I was going to make a TikTok video on this, but I'm putting this in the podcast. If you know of like a cottage core vibe reverse harem, let me know because I've had like the dark reverse harem and like the rock star reverse harem, but I'm like, where are these like cottage core? Like, what do you want? Snow White? Yes. <laughs> I want Snow White and her fucking 12 husbands. Seven. Seven goodness you gracious know? do you the more the first merrier of all, first of all first of all we're gonna be coming over to disney at least get the disney stories right okay okay i'm gonna be dressed up like a goth girl with my like black dress black tights <laughs> that'll be cute <laughs> but so um, yeah that was my last read though yeah. for sure um and it's just really hard to move forward because like sophie does a really good job oh, wait, of, let like, me see her your nails world. Look at those um, so, for our YouTube listeners. Look at her nails. Ugh. I'm sorry. I so, just had to comment on them. They look so good. Yeah. If you want to see my nails, you can go to my Instagram. Oh, it's the first time I've done it in like forever. Yeah. Nail nails by Jess. Thanks. Ooh. Um. So, uh, Sophie does a really good job of like really transporting you into the worlds of her book, and like it's so hard to dig yourself out of it. So I've been in a really, I've said, I've said this like literally every week. I've been in a real reading slump since Brutal Birthright series because it's such an amazing series and I literally do not want to let it go. And now I'm making my way through uh, Kingmakers. So I finished the air and now I'm on the rebel, which is starting to be a little more interesting than the air. I think I'm liking this one a little bit more Mm -hmm. Um, just because Miles is Ada energy and I love Ada um so I'm making my way through that but there are some other books that I want to get to Mm -hmm. um that are a step away from mafia because I feel like I've been doing mafia a lot and I needed something a little a little different Mm -hmm. so I'm going to show you some books that I'm really excited to read so the first one that I have that I want to get to is how to survive a modern day fairy tale it's by uh it's a debut author debut own voice is not not author l cruz um she this book is coming out on november 30th it is not out yet but um l is a friend of mine on instagram and she reached out to me and asked if she could send me the book and it's so funny because she sent it to me and then like a week later entangled publishing sent also sent me another copy so uh, i have two so, so I'm I'm, what i'm hearing is i'm gonna get a copy when i come i'm getting oh copy. oh oh well yeah if you want it for sure i'll give <laughs> okay. you i was gonna be like yeah i'll probably do a giveaway for it but if you want it i'll give you <laughs> no 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 um, give it away give it away to your followers we all know i have god knows i have enough books that's true that's true you, you have too many oh uh, but <laughs> i do too i do too okay i do too the spider-man <laughs> meme <laughs> <laughs> okay and the next the next one that i want to read is the roommate by rosie dannon if you guys have seen th- this book or heard of this book you've seen it um it's like that illustration with the girl and the guy on the on the couch and it's very infamous because of like the male main character yeah. being a sw porn star um and yeah and she obviously is not very knowledgeable in the the worker the skills so of course he decides to teach her little by little oh, definitely kiss quotient vibes oh gosh i think Ooh. that's one of my favorite tropes one of my favorite tropes is like one of them whether it's a girl or a guy or you know that one of them does not know no. anything and the, and ask the other person to like, to like teach them can you teach me or can we practice Ooh. and you want to know why Ooh. that is one of my favorite tropes why because i've done it in real life like four times oh and it's worked every single time you every know every single time i do there that. is like- so if you if you want to shoot your shot with a friend just ask just ask be like, hey well, like help me out Especially when it comes to a younger, guy. younger. Once you get a little bit older, yeah, don't be doing that. Well, Talk especially when it comes to guys and they're like, teach me what you want. And it's like, <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I haven't I haven't dated. Or is it more of like, show me? I'm like, oh, oh I'm like, sir. 
slay the boots down houston i'm deceased <laughs> it's it's something different about those scenes that really just mm, hit me yeah um so those are two books that i definitely want to dive into i also have two by um author shane rose who sent me her duet her billionaire ceo um duet on kindle it is the um, um revere or uh, how do you say that is it revere or reverie there are two different words oh well one of those but the other one is in- inevitable she sent them to me on um kindle and i'm really excited to read it if you guys um don't follow her um on tiktok you guys should she's like amazing and she's so pretty she's so so pretty um she's um her tiktok handle is shane rose reads so definitely want to read those two books plus these two what else do i want to read i know you gotta start do you want me to do two books and then you'll do two more books yeah you do two okay you do two okay because i gotta go figure out more so for everybody listening i am going to be doing um you can check my instagram i'll be posting about this um december but I'm going to be doing the 12, 12 books of Christmas. So I'm going to be trying to read 12 books in the month of December before Christmas. Um, and this is kind of just for fun to see how many I can actually get. And a lot of these, I'm going to kind of cheat and use audio books. So I'm going to get the whole Sophie Lark series done <laughs> in this time. That's seven because, books right there. So that, that yeah, be- like, that's gonna definitely like get through my list. But so the first two that I have, the first one I'm so excited for because I loved, I love one of these authors, um, the author of Promises and Pomegranates. Um, Sav R. Miller came out with a new book with Emily McIntyre. Um, it's Be Still My Heart. And the uh, main love interest is the person of interest in a murder mystery case. So. That one is one that I'm very excited for. And then Grace should be very, very excited for this one. I have The Stopover. Is it the first one, right? It is the first one. It's the first one. I got this for $9. It was on sale for $9. I also didn't realize it was this kind of texture of book. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of thick she kind of like she's like kind of thick like yeah it's it's um if you look at all of them they're all kind of thick um they're all like short and thick yeah so they're not that long yeah they're not they're not that long but they're kind of short and thick so those are the first two books that are going to be in my 12 days of christmas um i oh, did let me know when you get to the casanova because i mm-hmm. feel like that one that one is kind of my favorite uh-huh though i love the second one which is tristan uh-huh i love them all yeah but, i but it might it uh, so i've heard of quite a few things about tl swan's writing style um mm-hmm. all of my friends uh here do not like it they do not like the writing style they they think it's very simplistic mm-hmm. um which to me is like if I like the story and the writing is it flows enough Mm -hmm. I'll like it I don't care I I mean like if I like the story I'm mostly gonna like the book and recommend it like and that's why reading is so subjective is like if but some people can't like get into it and then they don't yeah so So those are the two books that the first two books did you pick your next two books Mm mm-hmm Okay, what are your next two books? So my next one is The Bromance Book Club. It's the first one. What's the first one called? It's, it's called The Bromance Book Club. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, yeah. That's the one I'm going to read. Um, and then I'm going to try my luck and also read the first book in the Ice Planet Barbarians. I got... So the last time I went to, so Tanya, um, Tanya, Pauline, and I were able to go out. Dude, I want those covers. Berkeley sent me it. 
I want those. I got the old covers. They're so nice. The original ones. They're out now. Well, now, but when I was out, they weren't. Oh. So, um, we went out. We went to Barnes and Noble, and we were like, we spent like literally like forty minutes in Barnes and Noble, just walking around and talking, which is such a vibe. Which we um, need to do when I go, because I literally have forty yeah. percent off. Yeah, that's what we need to do. We need to stock up. That's what we'll do. And basically. Pauline was filming a couple TikToks and then we saw Ice Planet Barbarians and then literally there was a point where we were trying to, conv- they were trying to convince me to get it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't know. I also want them to match because I want to get the new ones. Um, yeah, and then Pauline waited. was like, Pauline was like, no, well then I'll get it. And then I was just like, are you sure you want to get it? I mean, don't you want yours to match? And then I was like, well, I'll take it. And she was like, no now I want it but then she ended up deciding that she wasn't going to get it she did want hers to match and Tanya forced me to get it so then I got it and then the next one is Credence which I feel like is going to be a big jump for me that's like a huge okay Credence I have a love-hate relationship with Credence Tanya loves it Tanya is like obsessed with it I loved Credence like I loved it but the ending was just not my vibe the ending I was like that's what I've heard that's what I've heard I wish like I know hot take I don't think every romance book needs to have a happy ending like there what it's not romance if it doesn't have a happily ever after it's a book it could be a book and then romance is a subplot but if romance is the center focus of the book then it has to have a happily ever ever. That's the key point. Well, then, so like, if you have a relationship that fails, is that not considered like love and romance in that relationship? If it doesn't, if it doesn't then, end with a happy ending. But, but then the book, the, the book it has some other plot in the in the storyline that is balancing out the failed relationship and the ending I don't know, of for the that book. One, I don't. I don't personally i don't but then a lot of a lot of people say that the book is like you know more about the grieving process so then that because like i don't so then that would be the main focus of the book but then it has a romance and well because like if you think about it not every relationship like because we all like literally a romance book like it has to end in a happy ending you Mm -hmm. know it but it's like not in like real life not every relationship ends up in a happy ending so good point you can't good say point. so it's like it is it technically is more realistic if a character ends up like not working out with somebody like even though they try to and stuff they that doesn't take away from like them experiencing that love and having that it doesn't relationship it doesn't but at the same time you have to realize if you're looking at it like from a realistic point of view every relationship doesn't go further than that If you're looking at that point and you want the book to be a romance, the romance would only be looking at this section of this person's life. Afterwards, things happen. They don't end up together. For example, people we meet on vacation, they ended up together. Would they stay together after? I don't don't know. I don't think so either. But it's a happily ever after for now. Happily ever after for now, which qualifies it under the genre of romance if you're looking at it as like a well in real life we don't have those things well then yeah but our our real life is not a romance story that's true and then everything else underneath that's true life is filled with many different facades that you know make they're different it a stories whole within human your life. yeah it's a whole yeah. human experience you have the story of self-doubt you have the, the one of, of growth of of um understanding you have the one of grief you have love you have familiar relationships you have found them you have all of these things that make up the human experience mm-hmm. in your own lifespan that wouldn't fall under romance just because you have a happily ever after you know that's not so would you say like if I wrote a book and it's like a romance book it like it's it's like I don't know I'm trying to think of a romance book I literally have a bunch of romance okay I'll give you one I'll give you one from blood and ash okay so let's say I but like from blood and ash is also like fantasy but I know it's a romance exactly it's it's a romance exactly 
but but it's fantasy with romance as a subgenre. Yeah. So, but like I'm saying, like, what if I wrote people we meet on vacation? Okay. So I people we meet on no. I'm trying to think of one that's like exclusively like just like basically romance. Um. Why wouldn't people we meet on vacation be romance though? You got me there. Okay, so let's say, let's say. So okay. I, I wrote, let's take people we made on vacation then. Okay. So I wrote people we made on vacation. The main, the main plot of it is them reconnecting and finding that love and them being, in, that's like the main focus, but they don't end up together at the end. That's still okay. A I'll argue this. I'll argue this. <sighs> them reconnecting and them ending up together. That's the arc of that story. If you were yeah. to change that, where they don't end up together her main arc what is she left with at the end her job her newfound refreshed viewpoint of her her job and what she wants to do with it what she wants to write about what she wants to experience what she wants to do with her articles that's her ending arc her ending arc Mm -hmm. is not no longer her and alex but her ending arc is reconnecting with not only a person that she enjoys being around with, with her best friend, but also reconnecting with her passion of be doing her travel blog. That would be the main chunk. So the romance would come second. So you would put it in fiction, not in a romance genre. Yeah. So you think the only, the only way for a romance book to be truly a romance book is for it to have a happy ending. Or happily ever after for now. That just doesn't seem realistic. Like I want, I want to it, saw. But it, but these, but these but that's romances, what the genre they're is. not. Yeah, that's the, that's it's what the drama is. is. I, it, I get it. I know what you're saying, but I just. But, but it's it. it's different for you because you have a a view of what romance is. Romance is an escape. Remember, this genre is an escape. Sure. You know, because we we know the reality. We We're know single that pitches, romance. But- you know, we know what it is. You know? We have no romance in our life. We know we know that romance is not a for sure thing, that it takes a lot of work in order for it to make it all yeah. the way down the line. We know the reality of it. So this romance genre that has these happily ever afters, at least until the end of the, the page, or a sense of escape or what to strive for. But then once the, the page ends, you know that this couple still has a lot to overcome, still is going to have problems in their life and whether they overcome them or not is questionable. But within the pages of the book, you got a window into a moment of happiness. So what if like the like the final last pages of the book was them breaking up? And it's like the whole relationship is literally stringed out, string, strung out through the whole book. Like up until like the last four pages, you still think it should be. There's something else in the book then. But like the last scenes and stuff. Well, well, if you look at it, if you look at romance books, they have romance and then they have an underlying problem or an underlying plot line of self-discovery or something, right? Yeah. If they break up, if they break up, but she still has that one thing that she was also working towards. Mm-hmm. That is what she actually was looking for, or he was actually looking for. For but example, let t- me give you. Let me give you a. Wait, movie. can I have a, can I ask a question real quick? Does that take okay. away from romance being the the majority of what the, the book was the about? major of the book? Unfortunately, yeah. Away. Unfortunately, yeah. It doesn't make sense, but it does. Because in order for them to break up towards the end, you have to have problems along the way to hint at them breaking up, right? It, remember, it changes the whole story just because That's you write true. a sentence at, at the end. It's not like, why did they break up? What's the, yeah. I did not see this coming. Everything yeah. led to them having, being together. You know, if you but just you all of a sudden write, can they're those, gonna break up. Can those like plot points not be part of the romance and part of like, it being about the romance of like the struggle of having a relationship and stuff. Yeah. Cause it's like, if, it can if, be if romance is the majority of the plot and then just because it drops off and they don't end up together, does you're saying it takes away from the whole book that 
75, let's even say 75% of the book is the relationship and their love. And yes, they have struggles and stuff. And yes, there's a subplot, but, Mm -hmm. and then that last 25% is the breakup and like talking about that romance and like finding a way through what they experienced in that romance. You still Mm -hmm. don't think it's a romance book. Okay. So let me, let me tell you this. It would essentially be a failed romance book, not just a failed romance in the story, but it would be, it would fail to meet the requirements to qualify as a romance book. It would have gotten there Mm -hmm. and yet didn't finish it out. It's like a lot of books that people say, oh yeah, this is a romance book. And it has, like, like, it's like saying like Cruel Prince was a romance trilogy, but it wasn't. Though their relationship was at the center focus of the, the entire series, and they were the, the catalyst and a lot of the things that happened, if you really like, yeah, when everybody was talking about it, yeah, you know, you focus on that part, mm-hmm. but that's not what the actual story was about. Yes, they were at the forefront of it. Yeah. That's but what, what you if saw, but if you look at it, it's about but, the romance. But, the, but that's the thing. So it's either. You're, the author is trying to accomplish something but doesn't doesn't get there you get me so well, that's the point for example for example if sorry to if, all of our listeners who i'm i'm hey, trying hey, to be this devil's, is, this is, i'm trying to be devil's advocate it. here i like but i this understand is good. This is but good. i'm trying this to be great. devil's advocate here <laughs> this is great because you know other people may have this question too you know yeah um so it's it's like this <sighs> If we'll take the cruel branch because that's like the closest. I would I don't know. I'd switch like, it's not, but it's not a, a YA, romance. It's a YA book. And so when I think of YA books, I don't think of like especially YA fantasy, I don't think it is a romance book. I think of right, it right, right. But t- let's take book. away the fantasy aspect of it. Okay. And let's just take them as them like a historical fiction book. Okay but it's historical romance, right? Let's say that it's that. But you're putting it in the romance category when it's not in the romance Let's, Yeah, exactly, exactly. Because many people at the beginning, like a year ago, would put it many in people romance. would put it in romance. They yeah. would qualify it as a romance when it really is not. I think it's a and political. And it wasn't book. because of that. Because the underlying the actual chunk of the story like if we're gonna break this down like a sandwich the actual meat the vegetables and the, the mayo the whatever else you put in the sandwich was the actual political line of the story mm-hmm. the romance was just fluff was the the bun mm-hmm. to encase everything in right okay. it yeah. looked like a romance to so many people mm-hmm. And then when other people actually started reading who were actual romance aficionados, they're like, like, no, this is not romance. Yeah. This is not romance because it's not, their relationship is not the center focus of this. Mm -hmm. A lot of romance books, if you read, if you really look at romance books, the romance is really shaped on their relationship Mm -hmm. and whatever they're trying to accomplish or whatever they're trying to overcome is secondary to their relationship. And oftentimes it'll come in clashing with their relationship, whether it, it's them choosing their career over their relationship or them choosing uh, some obligation over the, the, the relationship, but they always choose that other person. If they were to choose the other thing, if they were to lose the person, they would have the other thing. So then the scale will tip mm-hmm. into no longer being a romance. This is why Me sense. Before You is not a romance book. Yeah. We have, because that- Spoiler alert. That story, yes. it's, it's, it's about oh. their relationship, but, but it's, it's more. more about the change that happens in her yeah. than it but, is about their relationship. But I think what I'm asking is, you're, you're saying like, yes, like romance books and stuff, but you're, you're talking a lot about like, the subplots and stuff and you're saying like talking about the subplots and when you talked about like the sandwich of like the romance being the fluff and stuff well what what if in a book the plot is just the fluff Mm -hmm. and like 
the book itself like is a romance it's it's literally mo- mostly about their relationship and stuff and then it not working out in the end is that not is that still not considered a romance book so let's look at some books where they don't end up together we were going to talk about our reading goals and this is what we're yeah, talking no. about no <laughs> okay so let's talk about this um let's go into a walk to remember everybody has seen that movie if not. you have not i have not what are you doing i'm looking at you maggie um i'm living my life grace <laughs> clearly not to the fullest if you haven't seen it <laughs> I pick a different movie. Pick one that I've seen. I can't. I can't. That's a really good one. So b- basically the, the essentials of this this story is um if you don't care to know then you can skip this whole explanation, but it's really good, so you better stick around. So basically a walk to remember is the typical bad boy guy in school. It's a Nicholas Sparks book of course for those of you who don't know. Of course it is um and so and so um he there's the quiet demure christian girl at school who (laughs) keeps to herself and his friends always pick at her and do something he does something to another kid and the kid ends up getting hurt very very badly ends up in the hospital he ends up having detention getting close to her they end up getting really close. He becomes protective of her. He ends up falling in love with her. He ends up actually dating her. And um, all of his friends make fun of him and all of this stuff. And she basically, along the way, she ends up telling him, like, we're going to break up. This is this is enough. I need to let you go. He, decides, he says no, which is the typical response. And then he finds out that she has cancer and she is dying. And she does not have that much time left. Let me look up this movie because maybe I have seen this movie. <laughs> it's with um, what's her name? Something more, and more Maggie Moore. No. Oh, this movie. Mandy Moore. Yes, I've seen this movie. Yes, okay. it's a romance movie. Mm-hmm. What is it? It literally it is. is. It is. Do they end up together? no i thought she dies they end up did they end up as far as she had did they end up together i don't know i don't remember (laughs) girl they got married they did oh my gosh marriage isn't the final step (laughs) no but they got married Mm -hmm. and he stuck it out with her until she passed away but that's not a happy ending that's a happily ever after for now Do you see, it falls into that category because they made it to the end of the line. They made it until death do us part for her, for, right? After, after he goes on to live his life, but he has been forever changed by his relationship with her. So therefore. So if a, if a character dies in the book, but their relationship was still on while they died. It's still a happily ever after for now. Mm-hmm. So a character can die, but a character can't be broken up with. Mm. Because their whole story was centered around their romance. And like, like if you look at like the Titanic. But that's the same thing for Jack like- Jack died. Whole, yeah, but like, that's the thing, like basically, okay the titanic uh or like a walk to remember <laughs> i was about to say the titanic and then i realized like everybody died <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, but, but, but look at the titanic the titanic you know it's it's the story it's a romance movie one of them dies one of them leaves the other person right 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 we'll take that one one of them dies, but the story is is about her change, the change of her viewpoint on life because of this one man, because of this brief moment in her life. And then after he died and after she survived, she went on to experience all of these great things. 
And in the end, she still wanted to reconnect with him. She still went back to him. So though she was separated from him and lived a life apart from him, in the end, she still came back to him. You can't so therefore that could happen in a book. What if a book it could happen? And if that did happen, that then, happen then, then, then then yeah, because they ended up back together. So they have to be together for it to be a romance book. They have to. It's like it's it's the checklist, and it's the only checklist that needs to happen. Versus like, happily ever after for sure. now. <laughs> She's like happily ever after. You can see how cynical I am. <laughs> it's one or the other. And I you see, you see how very romantic I am. One of them dies. I don't think that's very happy. But does she end up with him? I don't remember. Oh my gosh, Maggie. Literally, the closing scenes are her dying in her sleep. And then when she wakes up, like she is. But she still died her soul, alone. <laughs> her soul travels back onto the ship with all of the crew around her and who's waiting at the top of the steps jack but she still died alone but they ended up together but did they really but that's the that's what the um what do you call it that's the i'm sorry to everybody who hates me right now this is just too much fun <laughs> i can tell i'm stressing what's the word right what's the word that's the Mariah? implication Mm-hmm. that they end up together mm-hmm. so it still qualifies as a romance the whole movie as a whole is not a romance it's like a historical fiction romance it's a historical fiction romance it's a romance slash drama mm. of course it's drama it's a movie let me see Me Before You, romance slash drama. Uh huh. The Fault in Our Stars, romance slash drama. The Notebook. She ends they up end dying. up together. Did they end up together in the Notebook? They in, in the Notebook they end up dying together. What? Mm-hmm. I've never in the seen book. That. In the book, no. In the book, Ellie dies, and Noah lives, and then Noah's son-in-law ends up having his own book. Nicholas Sparks. Uh, have you ever seen what Nicholas Sparks look like? Looks like. Mm, yeah, when I was in high school. This like white man is writing all of these. <laughs> I'm Which, telling you. He also, has... he's put in fiction. He's not put in romance. Because a lot of his stories don't have. They're romances, but they don't have. A, a for sure, it's implied maybe that they they're happy. But it's not for sure. So you still consider them a romance? The movies? Yes. No, you just said no. You just said you just said they were a romance. The movies? Yes. The books? The books? No. The books don't end with happily ever afters. Not always. Some of them do. The rescue does. I think the wedding does too. I think the wish too. Those are still shelved in fiction. I don't consider a romance technically, mm. because there's uh, there's other things other than romance in the books. Romance is a subplot. It's not but what focus. if romance is the main plot? If romance is pushed at the same as the main plot point, then it would be qualify as a romance. With but the not have a happy ending. After. If it's not, then it's not romance. It's fiction. Keep throwing them at me. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so here's another scenario. Okay. I write just a sex book. I write like Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, but they don't end up together. What else is going on? I don't know. The only thing I know that happens in Fifty Shades of Grey is their relationship. And the sex. Mm-hmm. What's it qualified as? Romance? Mm. And what if they don't end up together? Then it's not a romance. Girl, it's a simple it's a simple <laughs> response. You get you gotta give me more if you really want to make it more difficult. I'm trying to think of books that I've read. <laughs> it 
dude i haven't read in like a month <laughs> i'll give it to you yes i agree that there has to be some happily but like for some romance books i wish that they didn't end in a happy ending for credence most specifically yeah and but that, i would we're still going consider back, it. we're going back to it we're going back to it because yeah but i would still let, let's go back i would still okay. consider credence a romance book even if they don't end up together because while yes there is a subplot to it the majority of if a majority of the book is about their relationship and about the romance that they experience together, but is it really is it really about her relationship with them or is it about her healing from her relationship with her parents with a new surrogate family but does does a romance i guess no that'd be weird i mean technically they are family <laughs> Oh, they are, but it's like a new. It's is and not family but as in like because, blood just family, but a, just like a new. Just caretakers. because they're a surrogate family, that still doesn't take away from the fact that she loves them and that they do have a romantic relationship and stuff. But yeah, it it would be the same as if like you know a less taboo book. If like her family abused her, and then they die, but then she ends up finding another guy with his family separate from her but then but the they whole... envelop her they envelop her in it and they basically have to teach her how to love and how to grieve and how to process her trauma from her parents and then she ends up falling in love with the guy but then they don't work out but she has now overcome that she it's a self-growth book well but if, if all it's like of made... it's like pray eat love my computer's dying, by the way. I don't know what that Let me. Is. Have you seen the movie? Great. Great. <laughs> okay, here, you get your charger and I'm going to talk about this. So you're talking about like the plot points. I'm specifically stuck on this. Like I'm going to play devil's advocate for this because it's too fun. But you're saying that like all of their subplot driving forces and that's what makes it if there's not a happy ending it wouldn't be a romance book but if if all the driving forces are those relationships and the relationships and the like romance of those relationships are the plot points that are moving the plot forward and if maybe one of those defining moments is them breaking up at the end how is that not considered a romance book because the yeah. main the main focus of the book is their relationship and they're growing together yes but eventually they don't end up together but yet they've grown together and they've experienced that love and stuff it's like this um if you have a tree two trees growing together growing growing oh growing okay growing growing together okay right next to each other and you basically entwine them so that they help each other mm -hmm. reach height. Yeah. And then in the end, you decide to rip them apart. Here's better now. Plant them separately. Hold on, hold on. Okay. You end up trying to rip them apart and, and planting them separately. Mm -hmm. You can't do that because the part of their growth part of them relies learning to stand on their own relies on the other to up to the point where they are literally become one tree if you were to try to do that with a story of them both trying to heal and trying to grow and overcoming their own traumas and then in the end you take them apart from each other without properly stabilizing them as their own separate beings they will fall back into whatever pain and trauma they had. So here's another analogy. You have two trees growing together. Okay. They're intertwined. One okay. of them dies. Okay. The right. other one overcompensates for it. So the like dead tree, the dead tree up to a certain point has now fed off of the life force of the first one. I'm going botanical gardens on you guys, <laughs> but <laughs> But the, the dead part of the tree, an uh, actual gardener would prune the dead part of the tree. But what is left from that sick tree mm -hmm. becomes the other tree. 
it now becomes part of it. Where yes, there's only one tree left and the part that was cut off, but it now basically grew into the other one. The other one survived, but it's still rooted with the second tree. This is fun. I like this. It is fun. Playing devil's advocate is really fun because I love frustrating grades. Oh my gosh. I used to do it all the time in high school. My teacher it's so fun because I'm just like, well, what if this happens? And I'm, I don't even agree with it, but I'm like, what if this happens? And they're like, mm-hmm. stop that. I'm like, oh, oh I do, do this. I do this in every single argument. I do this conversation. All, like, I agree with, with Grace. <laughs> Let's put this, let me put this out there. I agree with Grace that there are circumstances in books where I think it can still be considered a romance book. But majority of the time when I read romance, I'm looking for a fucking happy ending. And if they don't end up together and I'm crying on the floor, I mean, Colleen Hoover is a good example. Colleen Hoover is a good example where she can destroy your fucking heart and make you like cry your eyes out and you think they're not going to end up together. And then they do have a happy ending. So I think you can have a romance. I think you can have a romance book with that, like break up heartbreak and them still be happy at the end. But I agree Mm -hmm. with Grace. That's why my argument wasn't too solid because I was like, I kind of agree with Grace. So I don't know. How to had, go. It, had it been the other way around, I think I could have like I, I could probably tear down this argument as well. I how could would, tear it down the same way. Well, like you said, <clears throat> if you're using this, like Sweet. give me a romance book. Give me a romance book and I'll tell you how I'll change it to have them break up. But it'd still be a romance book. And it's still be a romance. Um, the Brutal Prince. No, because, yeah, it's a romance book. Okay. Okay. You've read it. Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. Okay. All right. <clears throat> oh, spoilers so. for the spoiler alerts for Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark. I will put up my hands when we're done. Yeah, we'll, we'll let you know. So. For Cal and Ada, they end up together after, you know, they're bound by marriage. They end up falling in love. They have their whole story. They end up together. They end up saving each other. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So how to keep it as a romance, but then Then not have them stay together. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's hard to do that in a mafia book. Yeah. That's not possible. But for the sake of argument, for the sake of argument, yeah. So basically, throughout the story, Cal would also have um, a kind of person that he talks to often about his problems with Ada. Ada would also have a person as well. So you would make it... But they, so they end up with somebody else is basically what you're saying. Mm, yeah, sure. But not really. But they have someone else to detach them. Mm-hmm. It, and it doesn't need to be like a romantic partner or anything like that. But the, for this story, for Cal and Ada's story to make sense, it would have to be that they both are torn in the other direction. In another direction, meaning... Cal and Ada love each other desperately so much, but he is trying to go on the straight and narrow and she can't let go of her past. She can't move out of, she can't move into the light. She can't be the woman that he needs. And she loves him enough for him to go on and become the, the, what's him call it? The, the mayor, just say the mayor. He wanted to, yeah, be to become the, the, become the mayor. And she knew that he could accomplish that. She loves him enough. And with this other person, her talking with over, that person would call into question, do you love him enough to join him along with you? Like go on this journey with him to become, in, to go into the spotlight? And upon that, she would realize that she can't. He would also realize that he can't change the way that she is because he loves the way that she is. Mm-hmm. And in then they would end up leaving each other. But by your standards, they still don't get that happily ever after. Together. But they still love each other. But just because, but they still broke up. That was like your main mm-hmm. argument was that they still they, they don't together. end up. They don't end up it's together. It's not a romance book. If if this is if I'm playing this thing, 
will it be romance they don't they divorce but they still love each other they still reconnect they still interact but they do not end up they don't date they don't get married again yeah it's not a it's not a romance because they don't have he ends up he ends up alone she ends up alone but they are always like the tap-in buddies that always come back to each other yeah but it's not they're not they yes they they it's not a conventional romance it's not a conventional romance yeah that's true Hmm. but if they if uh, but that's still that them they are together that's still there's is that though well but like they're still seeing each other they're still actively if it were to actually be the romance that it needs to be like actually the way split them up like they'll never they literally go their separate ways do you think oh that's hard i can't do that with the mafia book okay so like people we meet on vacation okay well people we meet. i gave you that one though i gave you that one though i know that's why i'm like but like people we meet on vacation i don't think it is a romance book like it's not a romance book how other romance books are i feel it's not it's, conventional it's not a conventional romance book is that's what i'm thinking let me okay let's do i'm trying to think of a book that you've read that i've read i know it's so hard um, i'm over here kicking back enjoying myself have you read it happened one summer oh no i haven't the kiss quotient oh okay they do okay how would you make that argument that it's still a romance change the epilogue yeah they did not end up together they broke up and they had to go their separate ways how would you argue that that's like making how would you argue that they're still business partners they're still business partners in the end they completely like separate go their separate ways you can't do that for it to be a romance you could have it where they break up romantically Mm -hmm. but they still have an appreciation and love for each other Mm -hmm. so could it so even if it doesn't have a happy ending it can still be a romance if they still have that connection but there still is that barrier of them being able to reconnect yeah i'd say so i haven't read a book like that because yeah. it's not it's not considered a romance it's not considered a romance but if if it if they still have that love is it if, it if it's still a fulfilled romance up until the epilogue no yeah. but it's like but princess like, diaries but <laughs> i had to think for a hot second what that was but like what I think, but you're still having this idea that they still are connected and they still, that's why it's so hard. It to has argue. to make sense. It has to it make has sense to make where sense. they have this still connection where they still see each other and experience each other that still kind of technically makes it still a happy ending. Because even mm. if they aren't together. It's not really a happy ending. It's more like a satisfied ending. Yeah, it's it's not that they're like completely. So maybe that's, maybe maybe like, I'm not saying like not a happily ever after, but I just wish that they didn't, the person who she chose, she didn't end up with. Like, yes, they're still in her life and stuff, Mm. but the way it ended for Credence I'm talking about, I wish it hadn't ended. Like I wanted her to be happy and have a healthy relationship with her family and stuff, but the way she has the healthy relationship, I wish she had it differently. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. Because I I feel like- like I know it wasn't brought out of the blue because there were so many small, small context clues that like I was even rooting for it. But then at the end, I was kind of just like, it felt so rushed, if you know what I mean? Like it didn't feel fully Mm -hmm. developed is why Mm -hmm. I think the ending of the book was so. Mm. Lackluster. Yeah, yeah. I loved the, like the plot line, the plot, the romance, I loved it the spicy scenes i loved it yeah this is going to be my first now that we're done with the whole romance Taboo. conversation yeah. um, this, is, this is our is... main episode title i know do you need what a... makes a romance do you need a ha- hea for romance um but for credence it's going to be you're like my first really 
Yeah, because like the other taboo that I do is like stepbrother, and but that's I'm cool. I'm cool with stepbrother. Honestly, though, is like stepbrother really taboo anymore? I I mean, for some people, yes, but like for me, I guess I'm different. I'm just different. <laughs> um, I mean, we I'm, need I'm just to so talk used about to... this a lot more <laughs> in I'm private. Just, I'm just so used. I mean, I don't have a stepbrother, so I'm not like. But like I've read a lot of stepbrother. You're moments. not in danger of crossing that line. Yeah, sadly, no. <laughs> I don't have a rich billionaire stepbrother to like marry, who is not I related mean, to me by blood. Look, stepbrother is. It depends if your stepbrother is from like childhood. Yeah, I think it That's depends. Different. If, like that's different. It's it's it, it depends if it's like your like high school like rival, and your parents get married, and y'all have been like enemies forever and then your parents get married and then y'all are technically step siblings or it's like yeah and then the real chunk of your relationship doesn't happen until after high school yeah or after like, you're out of your parents houses i mean i've read some where it happens in the house but that's oh, like college. i have too i have too but you know it's different it's different it's There's different circumstances. than you grew up with them as a brother. I think that's yeah, a little... because that's like that's essentially like your adopted, brother. yeah, baby brother. You know, yeah. growing up with you. That's that's, that's weird. weird. <laughs> but like <laughs> having like somebody who you're thrown into the mix is like having like a a thrown in best friend. Yeah. You know, yeah. who doesn't have any obligation to? Anyways, this is gonna be my first taboo book. Um, we went with, on like, a the tangent. step, literally a step uncle, step cousins. Yeah, because they're um, not related at all. At all, like they're like second removed. Yeah, because it's her dad's stepbrother. Yeah, so they're second removed. It's it's her cousins. Yes, it's her cousins because it's her technically her uncle, but they're not related at all. Yeah, but it's like two steps there and then offside. Well, it's like one, two, two, I guess three. But like your uncle isn't considered your cousin because it's different if he if it's like like my mom's cousin is my second cousin. Mm-hmm. But it's but her because uncle. he's not in because he's not blood. It's another step. But it, it but they're. But, like, I think when you say removed, it's, like, they're still, like, you still sh share some genealogy. No, because it's marriage. It's through marriage. Is it? Yeah. At least, like, that's what I think. I'm like, pretty sure that like, it is. Because now you're making me question it. I think that, that removed is, like, the, the, it's, like, not your family but directly you it's your family but it's still part blood. of your family tree like they're they're still related to you because they might have the same great for example for example let's do this let's do this it's um brutal birthright um I don't, you can't i haven't i haven't i'm not uh, i'm throwing names out there because you know that his siblings and you know remember. her siblings i don't remember okay 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 they they all have their own books but they're not I'm not going to tell you how they're actually linked. I'm just throwing names together. Right. Let's say, for example, Cal and Ada get married, right? Mm -hmm. Cal's step, um, I mean, sisters-in-laws are Cal's sisters. His, her, his brother-in-laws are her brothers, right? Yeah. Their kids, let's say another family is- Okay, Dante in is her brother, right? Dante is her brother. Okay, let's do Dante has kids and Ada has kids. Uh, let's okay. just do it two people. Okay. Dante also has okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Let's say Dante's lover who who Wait, has these are still though, these are still cousins. We need to put it in the Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting them. I'm getting girl. I'm getting them. I'm getting them. So let's say, for example, another like another family is married in. Mm -hmm. So let's say Cal's sister marries another guy mm -hmm. but separate from them right yeah that guy has his own kids and family yeah. mm -hmm. they are cal's step uh nieces and nephews mm -hmm. they are ada's step nieces and, and mm -hmm. whatever 
Dante, that's two over mm-hmm. plus a couple marriages. Mm-hmm. That would be removed because it's not direct. It's not a direct line. Mm, I see what you're saying. It's, I see what you're saying. It's a link through his sister, sister's husband, yeah. husband's Cousin. sister, sister's step. You know, yeah. there's like yeah. Like now a, a I bunch know, of jobs. I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. But for them, it's it's, it's old. like it's Ada. Ada has children. Cal dies. Mm-hmm. Or no, it's Ada has children. Dante, no. Ada Ada has child. Ada's mom adopt Mary's new guy. New guy has child. So it's her step brother. Right? Mm-hmm. Child has two children. Two two childs. <laughs> So okay. they're Ada's step nieces and nephews. Eight Ada's child's step cousins. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they're her step cousins. Mm-hmm. What are we arguing again? <laughs> we're we're trying to figure out how taboo it really is. It, it's not taboo because they're not related at all. Like because yeah, like, they're not. Yeah. and they're they're like second gen they're second gen this yeah they're like it's not like the direct like a cousin of a cousin it's it's all essentially like a cousin of a cousin but yeah it's not that because they're married to but it's just it's just but that's how you can look at it you look at it as like a cousin of a cousin yeah um which a cousin of a cousin you're not you're not that's not your family yeah that's their family but that's not your family yeah Especially Anyways. if they'll have no blood relation. Yeah. Okay. But so we're not gonna get into cousins because that's so back to I'm gonna just Grace talked about her two books she's gonna read. I'm gonna quickly go over the last couple books I have before we have to okay. end this podcast episode because we talked about happy endings. We talked about a lot. We talked about a lot of happy endings. Okay, so get a quick, sad book in there. Quickly, I am going to go through my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books I have for 12 days of 12 books of christmas so i have good gone bad it's the third book in the fallen men series by gianna darling when i tell you tish has been asking me to read this tish has been asking me to read this i don't know grace how you'll feel about the first book because the second book was really hard for me to read and it was hard for me to read i don't know how you're gonna feel about it yeah i think i'm gonna struggle with it but is there an audiobook I didn't listen with an audiobook. I don't think there is. I'll probably listen to it on the audiobook. That'll probably make it a little easier. So the second book is The Hookup Dilemma. Um, this is Constance uh, Gillum. Um, and this is like um, an ER nurse. Um, hookup, so it's serious. So uh, Entangled Teen sent me that. Entangled sent me that. Um, Love at First Spite by Anne E. Collins. It comes out January 4th. I'm hopefully going to read this and review it for everyone. Um, they sent me the ARC. Um, Graydon House sent me the ARC. Um, next is Fine Print by Lauren Asher. I'm hopefully hoping they have an audiobook for this. I don't know. I've had this for a while. Uh, Jamie sent me this. So shout out to Jamie and Rowan is the main guy's name, so you know I had to hop on that. Meet Me in London by Georgia Tofolo. Um, This was sent to me by Harley Quinn. Another, like, um, Christmassy time book. If you've noticed, I'm reading a lot of blue books for the winter. Um, Grace, I'm almost done, and then you can go. (laughs) Um, I have The Savage and the Swan by Elle Fields. Literally, Tish was like, you need to read this. I almost read it in October, and then I skipped it because I didn't really want to. And finally going to finish The Finish Line. This is probably going to be one of the first books I'm going to read so that I can put out a book book series, my favorite book series of the year video. And then Saint, also probably the first ones I'm going to read because I want to finish the series as well. So Grace, what books did you bring? 
Okay, so I've had a lot of Christmas books sent to me. I saw, I've been seeing Avon's been treating you. Right. I think it's Avon. I hope it's Avon, but then also, what's that other publishing house? Um, Harley Quinn. No, not Harley Quinn. Yeah, it's Harley Quinn, but it, it, that's connected with Avon. It's... Um, Ew, I, I can't know which one you're talking about. Um, HTP oh, yeah. HTP is HarperCollins. Is it the Forever Publishing? No, it's literally HarperCollins. Oh, HarperCollins. So I'm I'm on Harper, HarperCollins influencer list, which HarperCollins also owns Avon. Yeah, that's what I get confused sometimes because like I have Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn is part of HarperCollins as well. Yeah. But I don't so have Avon. I don't know. I don't ever know who to tag. Yeah. Do I tag Avon or do I tag HarperCollins? I usually but, just tag whoever's on the cover, whoever it says it's published by. Anyway, so I have this book called um, Second Chance Christmas. I don't know if you guys can see. Mm-hmm. It is a Twilight Texas novel. It is Avon Books Romance. Uh, contemporary romance it is by Lori wild i saw this and first when i got it sent to me i was like look how oh the sound the sound is great right it's um we still have to do an asmr episode but it's like so floppy and it's like a little bit bigger than a, like a mass uh, market paperback oh my gosh which is kind of what i've been looking for so i'm really excited to read this one I am also looking at um, this one, Christmas and Rose Blend, or Rose Bend. It's, I don't know what's going on in this one, but I peeked in and I saw a, a spicy scene and I was like, mm, okay, okay, okay. Um, and then I also have like these ones, the Christmas Bookshop. I also want to read that one, mm-hmm. but that one's by Jenny Colgan, Col- Colgan that one too I also have this other one but I don't know so you're doing the 12 books of Christmas with me too I'm gonna try I I have like a whole Will I make it probably not if these are audiobooks for sure also Harper Audio if you're listening send me audiobooks too (laughs) okay but yeah I've been this whole stack is like Christmas books that have been sent to me that's honestly great I'm so excited for you awesome which I'm going to be putting out like my, I made a template on Canva because I have Canva Pro um, for school, for our, um, for a thing I'm, I, a uh, group I'm in. And I was just bored one time in a meeting and I just made my like <laughs> layouts and show. they were, they were like, what are you doing, Maggie? And I'm like, nothing. I'm working on a poster for a speaker. And they're like, oh, okay. Um, but yeah, no, um, I'm definitely going to be doing the 12 books of Christmas I think I'm going to start it December 1st so it's basically 12 books in 24 days um do that which I think is doable especially if you listen to audiobooks I think that's the problem I haven't been listening to audiobooks and I I think that was your problem I was going to tell you when you're like oh I'm in a reading stuff I was going to be like well it's because you're not listening to like audiobooks really yeah and I have I have a project do I have two things due this week? I have a whole essay due. I haven't started it. I have two and essays due. I three essays. Two more. I have like two, three more commission pieces that I need to finish oh. that I haven't started. Dude, we are super we're busy. busy. We're busy. We're busy. But you know, we're we're making it do. We're making it do. Anyways, I think this is a good place to end. Yes, I think this is a perfect because I literally have work in an hour and a half. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 been an interesting discussion. Yeah, it's been an interesting discussion. <laughs> it's actually know? really fun. We never did. Really... I learn some things about you. I'm just kidding. I know that you agree with me because I'm right. But you know, there are people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> whatever you like to think i'm not gonna step on your toes right now <laughs> um uh, if you guys uh like this episode make sure you guys give us uh, a like and make sure you guys subscribe to listen to us so you guys are 
updated when we release new episodes make sure you guys remember go ahead Oh, I was going to say about liking us and make sure you're subscribing on platforms. And if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, if you could please give us a review, um, that would be great. Also on Spotify, know you can like us. Um, and Spotify listeners, don't also don't forget to answer that questionnaire that I have for y'all. Um, if you're not on Spotify and you want to answer a question um, or ask us a question for next week's our podcast, anniversary episode um you can definitely shoot us a dm or you can comment on our youtube video a question um you can like dm us on personal too and be like hey i have a question for the podcast um but yeah if you just subscribe if, we're gonna try to figure out a way for you also to if you would like to send in a voice recording of you asking a question yeah you can also do that on our dms um it'll be a nice way for us to interact with you guys and kind of connect with you guys and see what you guys really want to hear from us um we will have a special guest on our anniversary episode helping us out with that so it'll be really fun for you guys to basically interview us yeah be really awesome yeah so if you can please Um, please get some questions in for us yeah and uh we hope you guys had a great thanksgiving with your families um yesterday and you guys oh, two are, days ago or two days ago yeah <laughs> if you guys Depends on when you <laughs> celebrate yeah um hope you guys have a great winter break and um get ready for this christmas season if you guys are i do want to set this out if you guys are planning on buying books for your friends and things like that make sure you guys try to do it as soon as possible because there is a shortage well it's really hard yeah so i work at barnes and noble again um please don't bombard us two days before christmas um buying books like i already bought actually i can't say anything okay but grace knows why (laughs) grace knows what i've been doing it's kind of a secret so oh okay yeah yeah yeah. um she doesn't know (laughs) she's like she's like sure yeah Mm -hmm. yeah 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 yeah. (laughs) well i'm trying not to look into it because if i look into it i'll probably figure it out yeah (laughs) um but try to buy your books now because there is a shortage you don't want to be one of those people and you remember be kind to your retail workers they are doing their best okay they are doing their best please do not be one of those peoples okay um but yeah and if you can instead of actually buying physical books go ahead and give them an amazon gift card give them a gift card to their favorite favorite um small indie bookstores try to support those small businesses over this holiday season and yeah hope you guys have a great one have a good rest of your I will see you next week. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.